too hard when the camera's on. Hey everybody, I got my 2017 M8 Mountain Cat in here again, uh, supplied by Ralph's Motorsports of course. So I'm just going to show you a couple little things on the back of this sled and uh, I've just been getting hassled for a few of them but I'm going to show you exactly why I did it. And it all has to do with the snow flap assembly so let's go back and take a little bit of a look at that and I will tell you why I did the things that I did. So here is the back of our sled and you notice firstly that there is no snow flap on it. Um, I also have the tail light off of it right now, the tail light and the mount bracket. Don't worry about that. I'm actually uh, making a uh, mount for tail lights, um, and you just don't need to worry about that right now. Anyway, as you can see, right now, this thing, you have a whole ton of space to grip anywhere you want to. Just like all the other manufacturers, you have a completely exposed rear bumper where you can stick your gloves anywhere you want. You can stick a hand here and you can have a hand here over on this side as well as you can have a friend helping you out, pulling, trying to get this thing uh, unstuck and out of the snow. Um, so let me show you what the factory snow flap looks like and why I took it off. So here is our factory snow flap now. And the first thing that you notice is that because these points are riveted uh, from the back and into the bumper, now I cannot put my gloves there, as well as each of these grab handles, even without gloves on, you know, they're pretty small. So when you put on a big pair of gloves, now you don't actually have a whole lot of room there to grab, especially if you're having a friend pulling you out. You're really limiting the space you have to grab onto this thing. So once again, once I take that out, you got a whole exposed handle here. And now Articat does have bumper kits for this. If you want to spend the 250, 280 bucks, that's fine. You can go ahead. I don't mind you doing that. Uh, this is just a cheap alternative. But the one thing you get hassled on is your sled now overheating. And yes, that's true. What this snow flap does is it actually helps recirculate the air and the snow. So when your track kicks up snow, the snow particles are actually recycled into the track and then they get fired into the heat exchanger and that helps keep your sled cool. Now when you don't have this on, now all the snow that your track is kicking up, or for the most part of it anyway, is just going out and onto the trail. So um, yes, you will overheat, but that's what these little machines here are for. So if you don't know what those are, those are ice scratchers. You don't use these when you're riding in really deep snow or when you're riding on top of the mountain. You use these ice scratchers when you're on the trail up. So these ice scratchers hook the snow and they keep your rails cool as well as they throw a whole ton of snow up onto the track and they throw a whole ton of snow into the heat exchangers as well. So maybe you unload at the beginning of the day, you drop your scratchers down. Of course, there's one on the other side as well. But you drop your scratchers down at the beginning of the day, head it up the trail, and then you get into where the deep powder is, where you're riding for the day. And all the scratchers do is they go up and sit in your rails just like that. So you can imagine when you're going down the trail at 50, 60 kilometers an hour, those pieces of metal, they're kicking up a lot of snow into the rails. So that's how you keep your track and your engine cool when you're riding it on the trails on the way up. Now, of course, also, it does change the look of machine a little bit too. I do like the looks of them without the snow flap installed um, it just gives it that little bit of a modified look I like it but of course that's completely user preference if you're going to be removing the snow flap you have um, the rivets to drill out of course and you don't have to take the tail light assembly off like I have that's off for a different reason make sure when you're drilling out those rivets you actually get them completely out uh, because they can be a little bit sharp especially this one uh, the ones on the back um, and they can actually damage your gloves, so make sure you take them completely out if you're going to be removing that snow flap. And just keep in mind that you do risk overheating a little bit more, but just keep an eye on your gauge, and if you find you're starting to get hot, either drop your scratchers and um, stop for a while if you need to, or speed up. Um, these scratchers basically work by kicking up as much snow as they can, so if you're going, say, 10 or 20 kilometers an hour down the trail, that might not be enough to kick up enough snow, so speed up if you can and get those scratchers slinging some snow into your heat exchanger. And another thing that really used to bug me about having these Articat snow flaps installed was that when your sled, when your sled is really stuck, these snow flaps will actually be bent all the way backwards and up and the snow flap will be sitting 
up like that in the snow when you're stuck and now you don't have access to either the left side or the right side. So I don't like this snow flap, I'm not a fan of it and that's why it comes off. Um, another thing I notice is when you're backing off your deck, especially uh, especially decks, happens on some trailers too that are fairly steep, is that you're backing up and you're sitting on the sled and the suspension squats down so far that instead of your bumper being at this level, well, now it's down here when the rear of the sled dives into the ice or the snow or whatever you're backing down onto and the, um, the snow flap will actually wrap around the bottom of the track and cause your track to stop spinning. Now with some of the other snow flaps like the Polaris ones or the Skidoo ones, they're made of such a thin material that you can just back over them, not a problem and they'll pop out by themselves. The cat ones, I find they get a little more bound up and just to be a little more problematic than the other ones. Now, having said all this, you've got this exposed kind of rear um, piece of your tunnel that doesn't look all that finished, especially with the holes in them. Uh, of course, you can just fire rivets into the holes just to fill them, but what I have for this is I actually do have a kit for this and I'm just sending it away to get prototype right now where it'll clean up the rest of this as well as give you a little bit of a beaver tail, but I'm not gonna tell you too much about that right now because I don't have it available yet. And once I do, you'll be able to buy it. That's all for this week, everybody. I'm hoping I answered all your questions. If you asked them, uh, don't be afraid. Don't hesitate to send me uh, any more questions that you have on these things. If you're having a problem that you're trying to get by, uh, I'll give you a hand with it. Um, I'm going to be on a 2018 this coming weekend, and I'll give you guys my impression on that. I'm super excited to ride it. Brand new chassis, brand new motor. Well, not brand new chassis, brand new platform, I'll say. Uh, brand new motor, so I'm definitely excited to see some of the torque changes on that. And, yeah, that'll be this coming weekend, March uh, 11th and 12th. So, uh, yeah, if you haven't followed us, subscribe down below. We've got all my social media links. We'll be posting while we're out there uh, on these new cats. And... Everybody have a good one. I'll see you in the next one.